So if I had to choose just three lenses to live with for the rest of my filmmaking career, without a doubt, it would be what we call the Holy Trinity, the 35, 50, and 85 millimeter prime lens trio. And I choose prime lenses over the versatility of zooms because prime lenses continually outperform zoom lenses when it comes to optical fidelity or what we call image quality. And I have partnered with Nikon to share with you guys my top three lenses from those focal lenses, specifically from their Z mount lineup. The 35 and 50 millimeter S-line lenses at f1.8 and the 85 millimeter S-line lens at f1.2. Now, a couple of things. You only see two lenses here and that is because I am filming with the 35, but you will see footage of the lens and B-roll from the lens as well throughout this video. And second of all, yes, as a disclaimer, this is a sponsored video from Nikon. However, all the money exchange was simply to support the channel and Nikon not only understands, but encourages the fact that this will be all of my own opinions and not watered down simply because it's a sponsored video. That's very important to my audience and I think that's very important within what we call the creator or influencer economy. So this will be authenticity, the good and the bad. With that being said, we can't talk about these lenses if we don't hit on the Z mount first, because it's the Z mount that has made what Nikon has done with these lenses in particular possible. And furthermore, it opens up a world of possibilities. So the Z mount has an inner diameter of 55 millimeters and an astounding 16 millimeter flange depth. Now that is currently the smallest flange depth on the market, out edging the RF mount, which comes in at 25 millimeters. Now there's a couple of things that this allows for, right? Because that flange depth is so small, it allows for more light to hit the sensor. Furthermore, it leads to that increase in optical performance that we were talking about. All of these lenses, despite their shallow depth of field, have edge to edge sharpness, which is something that a lot of lenses struggle with. This means that there's no longer a need to stop your lenses down just to get a sharper image. They're just as sharp wide open as they are stopped down. And that's why I would always buy lenses previously at f1.2, but I knew I was going to end up using them at f1.6 because they were never sharp wide open. Well, that changes with this line of lenses. Furthermore, it also allows them to create lenses that are this small and compact. The 35 and the 50 millimeter are the same exact size. And look at how small these lenses are for f1.8. I also believe they're the same weight in the 85 at f1.8 also remains a similar size. It's just a little bit longer. But with that in mind, lenses that are this compact, small and light are going to be revolutionary as we start getting into these wider apertures, which definitely need heavier lenses. And even for an 85 millimeter, this is a pretty light 85 at 1.2. Furthermore, because of that smaller flange distance, this opens up a world of possibilities for a more robust and powerful autofocusing system. This is why the autofocusing system on the Z8 and Z9 continue to age like fine wine across firmware updates. And have become really competitive in the world of hybrid cameras. Now keep in mind, there's one more thing that this mount is going to allow Nikon to do. And this comes in with respect to the inner diameter of 55 millimeters. Because that diameter is so big, it is going to open up lens designs never possible before. Lenses with an f-stop of 0.95. Because these are S-line lenses, there's gonna be a couple of things that they all have in common. The first thing is going to be superior weather sealing. We have a gasket near the connection to the camera, and there's going to be weather sealing throughout every ring and every place moisture or dust can get in. So this means in a professional environment, you are going to get professional quality and you don't have to worry about the environmental situation when it comes to shooting. The other thing that these lenses feature, which is great for filmmakers, is a customizable control ring. Now you may not see it here as quickly as you do on the 1.2 85 millimeter lens because it's right here. However, the focus ring 
on the 1.8 series can be reprogrammed to say control your aperture if you would like. And there's a whole menu within the camera that allows for that functionality. And since the autofocusing system is so great on this camera, it's very nice to have that ability. Next is without a doubt, my favorite feature about all of these prime lenses they're image stabilized. And no, there's no image stabilization switch or vibration reduction switch on the lenses. The technology within the lenses communicates with the camera and offers you up to four stops of in-body image stabilization on all four axes. Now, all of these lenses are gonna feature a silent stepping motor when it comes to their focus system, and they all focus within the lens. Now, this is a very silent, autofocus system. I can barely hear it when I'm operating the camera. With that being said, there's still that known issue when it comes to the internal microphone where you're going to pick up that autofocusing sound if you're using the internal mic. So just keep that in mind. This really should not be an issue though, because when you're doing professional video, you're going to be generally using a shotgun microphone so that that's not an issue. And you cannot hear it with the attached shotgun microphone or with any mic that you may hang, like the one that I'm using right here. The last two things that all of these lenses have in common are going to be, of course, their low light capability with their wide open apertures. And furthermore, right, their nano coating. Now, the nano coating really just is a testament to all of the innovation Nikon has put into creating lenses. But these lenses are a dream to backlight with because flaring is at an absolute minimum. This makes sure that the autofocus system doesn't get confused. This allows me to have way more control over the cleanness of my image as well. And so that's something I really appreciate. Now that we have all of the commonalities out of the way, each one of these lenses has a particular use within my arsenal. There's a strength that these lenses have with respect to the context of storytelling and just the overall mood that it creates for the shot. Now, with respect to the 35 millimeter, this has a very special place in my arsenal for three things, two of which are connected. The first one is going to be my go-to lens for getting an establishing shot. Because the lens is wide, it's great at capturing the entire surrounding or the setting that I'm in, which adds to the story, which brings me into the second thing I use the lens for, which is providing environmental context, right? Again, because it's so wide, it's going to allow me to capture a bigger portion of the world. Uh, perhaps it could be the people in the scene, or could, perhaps it could just be details on the set that we're in to provide that context with respect to the story, right? That's what an environmental shot does, but that can also be used if there's something in particular that we want to highlight within a certain scene or a certain room before we go in with our more standard lenses. Now, the other thing the 35 millimeter is great for is going to be those action sequences, because of its wide field of view, you're going to be able to capture those large dynamic movements and the wide field of view also adds to some energy and excitement that those scenes really need. And don't forget, just because it's a wider lens doesn't mean you can't get close and intimate with the lens. There's gonna be a different sense of intimacy with the closeness of a 35 millimeter than there is with the closeness of an 85 millimeter. As a matter of fact, I would argue that the 85 is going to put a little bit more distance between your subjects, or I should say it's going to do that more easily. Now, the next lens I want to talk about is going to be the 50 millimeter at f1.8 in the S line. Now, this is probably my most used lens, not only in cinematography, but also in photography. This is great as a really good standard lens. This is my go-to lens for any type of dialogue scene. It has a very natural perspective. It's really similar to the human eye. And this just allows you to provide a sense of familiarity with your viewer and really just helps them feel like they are actually part of the story. Now, this lens is also very versatile as well. It can be used for what you would consider a medium shot or a standard field of view shot, or you could use it sometimes even in a wider context if you want just a little bit more compression, assuming the area that you're working in is big enough for that. Now, the next lens that we're going to talk about is probably one 
of my favorite lenses, despite it being what I call a specialty lens in my arsenal. And that's gonna be the 85 millimeter at f1.2. And there's a reason why I made the switch from 1.8 to 1.2 with the 85. The first one being 85 at 1.2 is an iconic look. I remember back in the day when I was a Canon shooter, I loved the 85 at 1.2, but first of all, it was not sharp. And I only had that lens because of the look at 85 at 1.2. There was a saying, you only shoot 85 at 1.2 for 85 at 1.2, not because you're gonna get a sharp image. Well, now you're getting a sharp image out of this lens and with its 11 rounded aperture blades, the, the bokeh is just, gorgeous. And if you stop it to 2.0, you're going to get dreamlike orbs when it comes to your bokeh. And this is going to offer you unparalleled low light capabilities when working with this lens. It's going to let in just so much more light. Also, in addition to that extra custom function ring that we have on the lens that I pointed out earlier, we also get a custom function button on the lens as well. So that's another nice feature to have, of course. Now, when it comes to my use for 85 millimeters in cinematography, there's really three things or four things that I use this lens for. The first one is going to be, when we have those dialogue scenes, being able to punch in a little bit more for perhaps a more intense moment within that dialogue scene or to express the character's emotions just a little bit more. That is going to really be one of the things that this lens just does well and allows you to highlight. The other thing that this lens is going to allow us to do well is isolate something within our story. My common go-to with an 85 is always a nice close-up shot of the eye because they say the eyes are the windows into the story. Soul. So know that you're gonna get really good isolation and intimacy out of this lens. Now, the last thing I like to use the 85 millimeter for is a little bit of a play on perspective. So because this has what we consider a telephoto range, we're gonna get a lot of compression out of that, right? But this also allows us to back up farther away from our subject. So that distance that we can put between our subject while keeping them at a reasonable size in combination with that compression can be used to make your character actually feel small. And I tend to like sadder stories uh, with respect to my uh, go-to storytelling style, right? I tend to like those sadder stories. And by having a 85 millimeter and placing your subject in the bottom third of the frame with respect to any composition really helps you highlight any emotional turmoil that they're going through or any smallness that they feel. And as a matter of fact, this technique was used with an even longer lens in the Joker when he was walking down the street. And that's the whole goal with everything that we do in filmmaking is to tell the story without letting them know you're telling a story. So those are my top three lenses when it comes to video for the Nikon Z lineup. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. If you have not, there is a link in the description down below for each lens that we talked about. And no, they are not affiliate links. So there's that disclosure right there. Be sure to share this video with a friend who may wanna hear it and leave a comment down below. Oh, and lastly, go ahead and follow me on on social media. Those links are also in the description down below. And friends, now more than ever, if you're ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I'll see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.